Hi, Mark the Snake Hunter here, and today I'm going to be talking about the Lowland Copperhead. Now, there are three different types of Copperhead here in Australia. The Highland Copperhead, the Pygmy Copperhead, and of course, this beautiful creature here, the Lowland Copperhead. It's really important to distinguish the difference between Australian Copperheads and the American Copperhead, which is actually quite famous. The Australian Copperhead is a totally different type of snake. These are called elapids, which means they have short hollow fangs at the front of their mouth, which they inject venom into their prey. The American Copperhead is in fact a type of pit viper, which means it has long hollow fangs that often angle backwards that they use to inject into their prey. Lowland Copperheads are found in Tasmania, Southern Victoria, Southeast part of South Australia, and some of the Southern Islands off the coast of mainland Australia, as you can see on this map. Copperhead snakes thrive in all weather conditions. Now, in winter, snakes enter something called brumation. Brumation is actually a period of latency or dormancy in a snake, and it differs significantly to hibernation. Hibernation is for endothermics, or warm-blooded animals, whereby they don't need food or water, and their body temperature drops significantly over the winter period. For snakes, what they do is go into a period of latency, and they essentially don't need to eat for up to a couple of months at a time. However, for reptiles in brumation, they still need to drink water, so they will emerge maybe once a week or something like that, drink some water, and then go back into the burrow where they're brumating. In order to avoid being bitten by a copperhead, the most important thing to understand is to actually leave them alone. If you leave Australian snakes alone, they'll leave you alone too. Their behavior is quite reclusive and shy. They actually don't want to go near you whatsoever. However, if you provoke them, they will thrash about, bite, hiss, flatten out their neck, and even mock strike towards you repeatedly in order to try to get you to go away. The venom of lowland copperheads contains post and presynaptic neurotoxins. Now, bites can be potentially fatal, however, there's only been one recorded near-death experience from a lowland copperhead bite, thanks to modern medicine. The venom of these snakes also contains powerful myotoxins and hemotoxins. However, clinically significant myotoxicity or blood disturbances is rarely documented. If bitten by a lowland copperhead, there's no specific lowland copperhead antivenom. Instead, doctors prescribe and use tiger snake antivenom. This beautiful girl in my hands is Annabelle, and it's a small female copperhead. Now, Annabelle is quite active during the day, but copperheads can also be active at night time as well. Now, Annabelle here is quite unique and holds a special place in my heart because I remember I came home one day and I found 15 live baby snakes um, crawling around on my floor that had escaped their cage. I didn't realize at the time that Annabelle was carrying. And that's an important thing to know about copperheads is they don't give birth to eggs. In fact, they give birth to live young. Annabelle here, like all copperheads, would like to eat frogs or lizards, typically, but they'll also eat other copperheads as well. So if I put two together for the purpose of mating, I need to be careful to make sure they don't eat each other. Copperheads will also eat mammals such as rodents, including mice and rats. Now I'm standing here in Doreen, which is in the northern suburbs of Melbourne, where there's been a relatively new housing estate put up. What effects do humans have on snakes? Usually it's negative, but the opposite is true when it comes to the lowland copperhead. Copperheads thrive in areas where there's marshland, swamps, water bodies, dams, rivers, lakes, etc. And they also thrive in areas of low vegetation. So once upon a time, where Doreen or Mernda was mostly farmland, or completely untouched by humans, now there are houses on every single block, all in close proximity to each other. These create a lot of hiding places for copperheads to go. And also, the introduction of houses creates low vegetation. So copperhead numbers in Doreen and Mernda are actually on the increase. So lowland copperheads can vary significantly in colour. This hand has a very reddish lowland copperhead. And as you can see, it's got beautiful markings and coloration. While the one in my right hand actually has got a black back and a red lip line along the side of it. Now, this copperhead is commonly mistaken for a red belly black snake. As you see, it's got black and red on it at the same time. But actually, they're totally different types of snakes altogether. I found yellow copperheads, brown copperheads, all different variations and color. And I've even found copperheads that are part black and part red halfway through. So they actually can change color too. It's important to distinguish where they get their name from is actually the coppery color that you find on their head. 
Thanks for listening today and learning more about the beautiful Australian lowland copperhead snake. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out our website and follow us on social media. Be sure to stay tuned and check out our next video to learn about Australia's beautiful venomous snakes.